Our mentor for today is Michael Zhou, the uh, core developer of Stellar Network. And he will be talking about uh, generalized state channel workshop, uh, conditional payment design patterns. Uh, you're going to learn a uh, design part of general, uh, generalized state channel conditional payments. Um, if you haven't registered to uh, at, at CONHACK yet, please do so at con.io slash hackathon. And here on the screen, you'll also see our um, websites and uh, Telegram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. Uh, I'm going to post it later in the chat. So this workshop will be uh, about 40 minutes plus 20 minute QA. You all will be on mute, um, but you can um, ask your questions uh, through the chat. Make sure that you send uh, your chat question to everyone so everyone can see it. And Michael will, will answer it. Um, this meeting will be recorded and we will share it um, on the Econ Hackathon website so you can review it later. Uh, so this um, workshop uh, was organized um, and facilitated by CryptoChicks and LinkTime. Uh, so please uh, welcome Michael. Michael, it's all yours now. Hey everyone. Um, this is Michael Joe from Center Network. And today we're going to talk about um, like Stellar's generalized state channel uh, because of the concept and some like uh, hands-on coding uh, are going to be included. So first, uh, uh, let's welcome uh, uh, Dr. Mo Zhong, our co-founder, and he's going to like give you a very brief uh, introduction of um, what a generalized state channel is and what like basically Stellar is about. So um, let's welcome him. I think I'm there first. Yeah, and, um, sure, first. Yeah. All right. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Bo, and uh, I'm a co founder of Stellar. Uh, we're so glad to have you here. Uh, I know I'm, I'm seeing like uh, quite a lot of you are here. So, uh, this, is what, this is what we're going to do today. So, uh, first of all, to catch uh, everyone up. Uh, to basically think on you know what it means to have state channel, uh, I will give a very quick overview of uh, what what is the basic concept of state channel and why it is useful, right? So uh, many of the stuff about the crypto economics, layer two crypto economics, and stuff like that, I'm gonna skip, but I'm gonna focus on the uh, core uh, concept and the functionality of state channel, and then we're gonna switch gear and uh, try to uh, switch to a more much more hands-on session of workshop where Michael is gonna have a uh, tutorial uh, to help you to understand and actually try out some off-chain transactions from a payment perspective and sometimes even a conditional payment perspective, which is a, a very useful design pattern in state channel. And uh, you know, uh, after that, we're also gonna talk about like what you can do beyond that uh, and you know, kind of a self-learning curve project uh, forward. So, uh, you know, without further ado, uh, let me just jump into today's technical topics here. So, uh, let's see. Ah, okay, yeah, we need scalability now. We all need this. What is the angle of scalability? We all know like the scalability has to match the level of scalability of internet information transaction. And this is how we're building the apps today, which is like two layer structure. But even with sharding and all that, the scalability curve is gonna look like this. The reason is that no matter how much you try to parallelize the underlying blockchain, there's always, always, always gonna be a limit because uh, you know, uh, the Amadeus law in uh, computer science tells us the level of parallelism, you know, basically for a system, if there's only a fraction of a transaction or a fraction of the processing capability that is not parallel, the benefit of parallelization quickly diminishes as you increase the number of para uh, the degree of parallelism. So, um, you know, this is why we think that even though sharding and layer one scalability is indeed very, very useful um, from a short to medium term, and even for a long term, there is going to be bound for layer one uh, scaling solution. And that's why we have to introduce the second layer, which is uh, the off-chain scaling solution. For those who do not know about like a layer two scaling solution from a very high level, what it means is that basically it is uh, uh, treating the blockchain as not a processing engine, not putting every uh, you know, transaction on blockchain, not burden transaction, all the transactions on blockchain, but 
only treat the blockchain as the final settlement layer and arbitration layer. So this is like uh, what we're going to trade blockchain for. And we try to move most of the transactions away from blockchain into this layer two platform. And on top of this layer two platform, uh, you know, we're going to have DApps. Uh, I saw some question, but like uh, the question flashed by, but you know, I, I'll, I'll pick up those questions uh, uh, as Michael goes through, goes through the uh, hands-on tutorial. Uh, so thanks for your patience. So you know, we think that this is going to be the inflection point of, uh, for mass adoption. And, uh, you know, uh, also a very important thing to note is that transaction per second is not everything for, okay, let me take a look at whether there's some urgent uh, question or not. Okay, yeah. So you guys can hear the audio, right? Yeah, you guys can hear. I think you guys can hear. All right. Okay. Awesome. Sorry. So uh, transaction is not every uh, transaction per second is not everything. Uh, you know, uh, we talk about transaction per second a lot, but latency is actually extremely important for user adoption because uh, if you don't have late, uh, if you have like extremely long latency, um, there's no user interaction possible, right? So let, let's say I'm doing some like interactive user applications. Uh, if there's no interaction, there's no you know broader adoption, right? So every technology piece, is, uh, think about the internet, think about any technology piece that's happened in the past, needs social interaction to actually achieve mass adoption. And that's also what's significantly missing um, in today's blockchain world. And that is also what like, uh, you know, um, uh, you know uh, layer two scalability is really good about. Now, enough of the abstract talk. Let me take uh, you know, us back to a very, very concrete example. Let's say Alex and Bob is playing a $5 chess deal on chain on the blockchain, right? So uh, how are they gonna do this? Well, um, Alice is gonna put like a, a $5 into the smart contract, which is like a, a chess smart game smart contract. And um, uh, Bob is also gonna put like $5 in the uh, you know, chess smart contract, right? Uh, now, what's gonna happen next? Well, uh, oh, oh, okay. Alice makes a move. Okay, some, uh, some of you must think that your video stuck, but you, your video didn't. I'm just waiting for the block to confirm. You know, this is like uh, the kind of, uh, uh, you know, user experience you will see when you're doing on-chain transactions, right? So it's extremely, extremely slow for every move you take. It will take about uh, 50 seconds to what, several minutes to actually get finalization of the transaction. And in the end, they both turn to old guys and old gals, and finally someone win the chance. So this is like not good. That's why we're, uh, we're, we need to look into this layer two scalab uh, scalability technology. And uh, you know, uh, this slide is like used to talk about serial network, but uh, you know, I, I will talk about it more in more general terms. Um, so what is the in layer two? Inside of layer two, it's not like just a one single pile of technology. Inside of layer two, there are actually several pieces of technology we need to consider. Um, and we, we actually can talk about them in a layered fashion internal to the layer two, uh, you know, uh, technology stack as well, right? So um, the first layer uh, will be uh, something called C channel, uh, which is the, the generalized the conditional, uh, generalized state channel construct. And it, it um, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, it can support um, it can, it can support a conditional uh, dependency. It can support generalized off-chain DApp, low messaging overhead, uh, you know, a complete state resolution protocol, and the network channels. So forget about all these. Uh, there are two things you can remember that is uh, transactions happening in a generalized state channel is super, super fast. Transaction happening in a generalized state channel is uh, super, super cheap. And for most of the transactions, it can be zero cost, completely zero cost. And I'll talk about, uh, I'll talk about why as well. And uh, third, um, you know, um, yeah. Okay, from administrator to everyone. Do you hear the sound? I think everyone is kind of hearing the sound. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, sir, so, um, generalized state channel uh, is, uh, you know, mostly used in the case where, um, you know, uh, for a particular application, the number of participants is predetermined. 
That is, uh, okay, you have like several people interacting with each other, but you know how many people you're gonna interact with each other before the high frequency interaction starts to happen, right? So, you know, what, what is not suitable for generalized state channel or state channel in general is uh, things like a very open-ended application, like a CryptoKitty, for example, is not gonna be supported by generalized state channel. That is gonna support, be supported by uh, things like sidechain, side uh, intermediate scalability, and that is also what Cellar Network is working towards, that it's not only just the generalized state channel, but also sidechain technology. But for this particular talk, we're gonna focus on the channel side. Okay, so now, uh, you know, coming back to the old example of uh, the on-chain uh, of the chess deal. Uh, now, comparing to the on-chain chess, where each of the transaction is actually on-chain and extremely slow. And let's let's take a look at what's going to happen if we play this entire chess game with stake entirely off-chain. In the very beginning, Alice and Bob is going to send each other something called off-chain conditional payment. And this is something that we are going to demo through like hands-on coding sessions later. But uh, what this means is that they send payment off-chain, right? So uh, now, uh, you know, uh, many of you must have heard about Lightning Network because Lightning, Lightning Network is definitely picking up paces and picking up attentions these days uh, for the very, very, very recent few days. Now, um, the payment I'm talking about here is also off-chain in the nature that it is not processed by all the blockchain nodes, but it is also attached with the capability of generalized uh, you know, uh, uh, payment, meaning that the payment itself when sent off-chain contains a condition depending on, uh, that can be depending on any kind of, uh, any kind of on-chain verifiable conditions, right? In this particular case, the condition is a very simple Boolean condition basically talk about whether I win the game or not. Okay. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, whether I win the game or not, basically. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, and after that, after the conditional payment gets established, what, they, where, what they're gonna do is that they're gonna play out this chess also entirely in a state channel. Now, how do you play chess in state channel, you, may, you might ask. Well, um, you know, uh, it is actually like from a conceptual level, very straightforward. So basically Alice will like make a move on the chess, uh, chess board and assign the chess board state, assign the most recent state, which, uh, uh, including all the pieces that she has moved and send that to Bob and uh, ask Bob whether you agree that I moved the, the step or not. If Bob agree and return the uh, return uh, the state with uh, also his own signature, um, then this state becomes the most recent state of the state channel, and each state uh, it has to be mutually signed, mutually agreed by uh, all the parties involved in the state channel. And uh, uh, there is also one thing that you might ask: that is how to determine the order of the valid states. Right, so you can have many, many states that is, are all mutually signed by Alice and Bob, but how do you determine uh, who can, which state came first and, or, or, or what, which state is actually the newest state, therefore the most valid state? Well, for each of the state, there is gonna be a sequence number attached to the state. So for each of the signing process, this, the sequence number is a keep uh, incre uh, monotonically incrementing. So after this entire process, uh, and of course this chess game itself can be entirely off-chain. You don't actually need to deploy any contract on the blockchain at all. This is a, a concept called the pure virtual contract, um, which was implemented by some registry uh, contract. But now with the, the most, the con uh, most recent constant in both folk, you can actually have uh, something called create2 to carry all this kind of virtual contract functionality. And create2 was largely uh, introduced by the requirement of, uh, you know, uh, a bunch of uh, uh, layer two uh, researchers and layer two in, uh, developers like us. And, uh, you know, uh, after the entire game plays out, uh, if Bob wins the game, uh, let's say like one of them wins the game, the conditional payment gets resolved into unconditional payment. And, uh, you know, this entire game will be finished without any single on-chain transaction. And that is how we make it extremely interactive and also extremely low cost. And just uh, digging into the uh, technical side a little bit more, what it means to build a state channel application is that you, uh, you need to write a smart contract that conform to the state channel interfaces. 
Um, you know, there are a bunch of interfaces you need to implement, uh, but uh, let, let's see like where we are in, where, where we are in on time. Uh, you know, we, we can talk about this though uh, if we have time later on. Um, but in general, you basically still write a smart contract, but the smart contract just need to conform to a certain kind of, uh, you know, uh, interfaces to be able to uh, run as a state channel application, uh, put it relatively simply. And just to take a very, very simple example here, um, you know, uh, uh, the, the condition, uh, conditional payment actually contains two conditions. One is the HTL register condition to do the multi-hop relay. The other is the, the Alice and the Bob game. And you know, uh, the one condition can get peeled off, uh, you know, from this condition group, and the other condition can be resolved after uh, the game between Alice and Bob finishes. Uh, so these parts uh, I'm going to skip for now uh, because uh, uh, you know, uh, I, in this workshop we want to focus on the very basic concept of state channel and try to get as hands-on as possible. Uh, so for now I'm going to just going to uh, you know stop right here because I have introduced the basic concept of state channel. And now I'm gonna, uh, you know, uh, hand, uh, hand over to uh, my colleague here, uh, Michael, uh, to talk about, uh, uh, you know, how you can actually make this kind of off-chain payment and how can you make this kind of conditional payment uh, and also potentially uh, making games out of this, uh, uh, out of this uh, uh, you know, uh, state channel uh, SDK. Uh, that we are going to teach uh, and talk about today. And if we have time, we'll, come, we'll revert back to some of the more uh, other technical stuff for this entire layer to scaling uh, tech stack. All right, so Michael, I guess uh, it's all yours. Uh, all right, so um, let's see. Uh, do you still, can you still see my screen? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so hi everyone, Michael. Um, I'm gonna talk about, um, in particular, like how you can write uh, in JavaScript um, to interact with the Saturn network. Um, so for uh, JavaScript, we provide a um, web SDK, which is basically a um, JavaScript library that you can install from NPM or just download it um, to like embedding the browser um, to be able to like, uh, interact with the set uh, with the local setter setter client. So um, first, I'm gonna go through. Uh, let's see how I can like minimize this. Thing. Um, yeah, don't worry about the uh, chat. I'm just once I, I I will be looking at the yeah, chat. Yeah, uh, try like can minimize this. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's fine. So first of all, you you want to go to. Um, oops. You want to go to github.com uh, slash satter dash network slash satter dash client. Uh, you're not sharing your screen. Oh, you're yeah. not sharing your screen? Yeah. Cool. Yes, it's good. Okay. So you go to GitHub and you search for like uh, satter client. And so this is what we provide as uh, pre-built Linux and uh, Mac binaries uh, that um, basically runs the uh, Saturn network, runs a single Saturn network node. Um, so for now, I'm just gonna like start one of the clients. Let's see, go to Saturn client, I do dot slash Saturn client Mac, for Give it a, one of the key stores. Uh, Maybe you want to zoom up a bit. Let's see if it's better. All All right, so now we've started a set of client binary. And um, let's go to, uh, so this is the, um, so we've included a very simple demo in the uh, web SDK. Um, let's, let's, let's like take a look at the code first. Um, so the demo does uh, very basic things. So it initializes a set of client JavaScript object by connecting to um, 
this localhost 27797, which is the, the port that uh, the seller node is uh, running on. And it opens an Ethereum channel. So this is like um, a generalized um, payment channel. And so these two numbers are the like what we call channel deposits. So basically when you open the channel, you're taking an on-chain balance from um, your Ethereum account to like you're, you're making a deposit into the channel and you're specifying a hundred, which is like your own deposit. And this, the second hundred is the deposit from your, um, the other, like the other party in the channel. So basically this is called, this call is saying that you're both depositing a um, hundred way into the channel. So for some, for, for you, those that don't know, like way is like the, um, is like Satoshi in Bitcoin. Basically it's the, like the basic um, unit in the Ethereum world. And once that's done, it's gonna console log, like right? channel has opened and we query the balance. And then we're gonna call like send ETH, which is another API that we provide. So basically this is where like the magic happens. It sends an off-chain payment of one way to this address, which um, we hard coded as the, the seller like payment server. So basically you're sending seller uh, one Ethereum, uh, sorry, one, one way of uh, Ethereum. And and we get the balance afterwards and we print it out. So let's see like if it works in action. So let's do NPM run demo. Hopefully it'll work. So it does uh, some compilations and Um, have a pass there. Okay. I think that'll fix it. Um, so now let's go to local host. Let's first to open up the console first. One, two, three, four. No, it's yes, it's fine. It's, it's not. Um, Yes, it works this time. Let's see. Okay, now here we go. So the, uh, it will switch to the, the tab that shows the client action. Um, our node is making an on chain auth open channel transaction. And if we go to Robston uh, Etherscan and look at the address that um, we initialized the client with, you can see that. Um, it already re it's re it received one way from um, the server. So this is because we like opened the channel and sent a payment to the server. And because the seller server is nice, it like sent the payment back, but uh, via on-chain. So uh, this key, like this happened very fast that we sent an off-chain payment and it resolved like almost instantly. And the server just initialized an on-chain transaction that sends the money back. Uh, so this particular one, that's the um, like open channel transaction we've been talking about. So this is uh, the channel contract, and this 100 way is like the deposit amount that we um, that we've specified. 
we specify in this call. All right, so here we go. Yeah, sometimes like Robson uh, ether scans slow to catch up. So um, this is the open channel transaction, and this uh, the second transaction is um, like the server sends the money back on chain. And from the console log, we've seen that um, the channel like open successfully, and we sent a payment, and it like resolved instantly, and the balance got um, updated. So yeah, um, that's basically what this. Uh, off chain like a conditional payment is about. And in this particular case, I didn't attach like any condition. It's like very simple, just to send an off chain payment. And if we if you go through our API documentations, you can see that um, we support. You're not sharing. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. So we support um, a bunch of APIs and most of them have two forms like ETH and ERC20. So we support like any ERC20 token. And so the one we used was send ETH. And um, the other one, which if we want to use for like building games, like the Gomoku game we've been demonstrating, and you're going to use this like send ETH with condition. And the condition object will have um, basically all the arguments for um, the um, the contract that you're gonna like the, the virtual contract that you're gonna implement, and if there is no like dispute between uh, the two parties, you don't have to um, deploy the contract at all. Um, but if you have like dispute or anything, then you would need to um, like uh, like basically the seller node will, is gonna call the on-chain contract for you and to get the finalized results, so you can like um, resolve the dispute uh, cleanly and get your money back. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. And you, you can always like go to our like setter dash network github.io. We have like all the documentations and um, we like not only have the web SDK if you're like a mobile developer, um, we have both iOS and Android. And there's also like some examples you can like go through and you just have to like install Android Studio or like Xcode for um, and, but we have all the documentations and uh, and we have our Discord channel and like Telegram. If you have any questions, just like feel free to pay me. Um, I'm also on like, uh, let's, oops, let's see. Oops, um, I'm also on GitHub. Um, let's go to my profile. Yeah, um, you can always like pay me on GitHub or um, just anything. Um, yeah, that's it. And I guess I'm now going to switch to questions. So before we jump into like uh, questions, uh, I also wanted to like basically uh, ex expand a little bit on the uh, um, on what Michael mentioned about like the uh, the uh, conditional payment part, right? So um, conditional payment uh, is I think a very very uh, very very useful abstraction uh, for like uh, generalized state channel in general. Right, so uh, basically you can say that I'm, I'm gonna sign a condition, uh, sign a payment, but that condition only depends on something. And that something can be, uh, you know, game result, and it can be an Oracle result. And that is a extremely useful pattern uh, that we have seen repeatedly in, in Hackathon and in many other events. That basically you can send a payment depends on tomorrow's weather, for example. Or you can send a payment depends on uh, you know whether uh, you can send a payment to your cloud service provider depending on whether uh, he maintains like a hundred percent uptime uh, of the um, uh, you know uh, of the uh, uh, you know uh, of the service. For example, in in the previous hackathon, uh, we had a uh, we had a kind of a, a hacker build something called micro subscription that is heavily relying on the pattern of conditional payment, right? So. Uh, just to uh, uh, dig a little bit more into like the conditional payment, uh, uh, you know, uh, stuff. Uh, the, the process of using, uh, you know, uh, the Setter SDK is that you open channel, you open ETH, or you open ERC twenty channel, and send ETH is very very simple. It's basically just like sending a payment uh, through uh, Setter network. Um, you know, uh, from a client's point of view, uh, each of the client is connected to different hubs, and the Setter network in the testnet phase 
is a multi-hub network, like uh, hubs connecting to hubs and connecting to some other hubs, but then you have, like, each hub has a bunch of clients uh, connecting to, it, to them. And, uh, you know, the most interesting thing or most interesting abstract abstraction I also want to dig a little bit deeper into is send is with condition. Or send like any kind of a payment with condition. So if we look at this, the call, uh, the call is pretty simple. It says like a amount of way you want to send, the destination with the destination, uh, you know, uh, uh, address. And most importantly, uh, you know, what I want to dig into uh, a bit more is the condition object. Right, so if you look at the condition object, you see a lot of like a, a stuff that is like a very puzzle in terms of names. Um, you know, uh, these are the things that I talked about as if you want to write a conditional, if you want to write a generalized data channel app, you got to have these kind of interfaces. Right, so let's just uh, switch to the, to the slides I just had. Uh, where are the slides? Okay, yeah. So if you look at the slides, um, for each of the channel, you have to have something called is finalized. And is finalized, what it, what, what it means is that whether the state channel uh, actually have been finalized or not, meaning that all the results in the state channel has been finalized and there is no, not going to be any further update about this state channel, right? So you're also going to have to have these kind of interfaces like intent settle or confirm settle. In time settle and confirm settle, what these guys does is that, you know, uh, if there's any dispute that is happening in the process of playing a game, let's say, let's just take the game example. If you're playing a game, your opponent just left in the middle of the game. So what you're gonna do is that the first step, you're gonna put this, this uh, entire smart contract uh, on the blockchain. Uh, and, uh, uh, and but, but first of all, I'm, I'm explaining in, in this uh, in a very simplistic term. But in in reality, we do a lot of optimization to optimize the gas cost of uh, disputing. But to understand the dispute process, let's say you just uh, deploy this entire uh, chess game contract on the blockchain. Now, after that, uh, what you would need to do is that you need to inject the most recent state. Like what is, what's the board look like? What is the last agreeable states uh, between these two parties? to the smart contract, right? So then you basically take that state and you call this in, in, in time settled state uh, call with the newest state. And then after that, you basically triggered a timeout period. You basically are triggered a, uh, you know, kind of a, a challenge period. The reason that there has to be a challenge period is because there might be newer state with higher nouns that is hold, uh, held by your counterparty and you're just malicious. So this kind of a challenge state is to let anyone to challenge the most recent state get settled in the state channel. And after the set, uh, intent settle passes, what, what's gonna happen is that someone's gonna say that oh, I'm gonna actually confirm the settlement of this channel. And at that point, the ch state channel itself, get, uh, which is in the dispute process uh, uh, is actually finalized. And you can, uh, you know, if there are some dependency on the state channel, let's say there is a payment uh, that is actually depending on this state channel, what's going to happen is that this payment object is going to call into the is finalized function and also call into the query result function. And the condition itself can be arbitrarily complex. Let's say I'm send, I send you like $1 and the, the, the query result can return to tell me that among this $1, I actually only finally need to send you point $1. But let's just take the very simple example of a Boolean condition, that is whether this hap payment happens or not, right? So at that point, the query result here in the Boolean condition is gonna return a true or false. And if it depends on the true or false, the conditional payment object itself is gonna basically determine whether this conditional payment goes through or not. So even if, uh, so what it means that even if uh, uh, you are uh, in a dispute mode or in a dispute process uh, during the, uh, uh, you know, uh, for, for a particular, particular state channel application, let's say you're playing a chess, but you don't, uh, you only need to dispute on that particular application. You don't need to actually tear down the, uh, you know, channel. So uh, what, what this kind of generalized state channel network or especially center network can enable is that uh, you know, it's, it gives you the feel of user internet. That it, once you connect the, to the internet, you just use different applications and you don't actually need to like uh, re-plug into different holes every time. 
So this is the kind of like the, the benefit that we, we also propose in this kind of state channel construct. Now, uh, coming back to the code here, if you look at these things, uh, these things are basically the, uh, you know, uh, if, to construct uh, a condition, you need to tell, uh, because like uh, condition resolution involves two parts, right? So first part is that to check whether a condition is finalized or not. That is like uh, the dependency, uh, dependent condition or dependent state is uh, finalized and not, not gonna be changed. The second thing is that uh, what is, gonna, uh, what is uh, that state returning to this dependent condition or dependent uh, like state change, right? So, uh, you know, the args for query result is for that and the args for finalized is for checking whether things are finalized or not. And there's also a deadline object because every condition is gonna be associated with a deadline object. And meaning that every condition has a timeout because if, you, if I send you a conditional payment with all that deadline, it might be means that my, my, my uh, you know, that kind of money will get locked forever and we don't want that, right? So after the deadline, this, whatever returns for the finalized or query result does not matter anymore. This, this payment becomes immediately invalid. So if you're playing, if you're kind of trying to build a chess game or trying to build a game similar like that, like that you might want to specify a deadline that is not too long, but not, also not too short. Uh, so that, you know, the deadline is like, um, you know, uh, much above the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the chess game process, but at the same time, um, you know, uh, you also don't want, to, don't want to set it forever. And the on-chain deployed part here is really to specify the condition you're depending on, whether it is on-chain smart contract or a off-chain smart contract, right? So for on-chain smart contract, it's pretty simple. The session ID here really is the smart contract's address, right? So like basically, uh, you know, uh, you just uh, specify what is the smart contract address. Uh, one, 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 thing to, uh, one two thing to think about is that it can basically, that address can be an Oracle's uh, smart contract address that is accepting external uh, Oracle result and uh, figuring out like whether a certain condition holds true or not, right? But, but uh, that session ID itself can also be an off-chain smart contract uh, uh, you know, uh, address, which is a hash of the smart contract code plus the initializing matter uh, initializing parameter and a, a random nodes. But with create a tool, that, that, that part is also gonna change a lot because uh, you know, be, uh, with a create a tool uh, operator code, um, you, you get the uh, you know, smart contract address before you actually deploy that. Uh, so you know, that, uh, all in all, that becomes like a kind of a smart, con a smart contract address. So uh, that is like a kind of, a, uh, you know, what you could use uh, these things for. And uh, we also have a, uh, you know, pretty useful method for you to call that is when you're doing this kind of state transitions, uh, we also provide the infrastructure to help you to relay the states of the smart contract transaction. Let's say, you know, you, 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 make, uh, you make a chess move and you just send it, uh, the chess move over and you want to send that like kind of a, a, a packed string uh, to the other side for the signature or for checking and all that stuff. Uh, so you can use send state uh, function. So, the current API we expose is pretty raw. Um, it's kind of in the middle. That it's not the raw. It's it's, it's not bare metal interfaces, but it's also not like a, uh, you know very very uh, you know uh, very very highly abstracted. Uh, so you know uh, for for these kind of things, you can actually resolve uh, uh, your conditional payment uh, based on Oracle. So we did some wrapping around the, uh, the specific use case of Oracle, but we're we're gonna wrap more. Uh, and also expose more at the same time. So both uh, end of uh, you know, our developers can have like very easy to use and very easy to wrap API and also very, very bare metal stuff. Um, so uh, that's kind of like a, a quick introduction of the API itself. Um, you know, uh, with that, uh, we will like uh, take some time to take any question that you might have. I think there is some question, I guess from Victor to everyone. Victor, you mentioned my name, but uh, um, you know, uh, is there a question? Oh, is a, uh, there is a question that is the source code for the Seller client open source as well. Uh, currently the client for the uh, Seller, uh, uh, Seller client is not open source yet, uh, but we will we'll be like, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll be looking at we open, open source them as we approach the mainnet launch. 
Okay, so there's another one. Is it possible to interact between different state channels? Um, so if by different you mean like um, different seller channels, then I think for the payment example, you already like um, the seller node is already uh, interacting between two uh, state channels. So like the one between, um, so what we call this is a multi-hop uh, payment channel. So um, between Alice and the seller server and seller server and Bob, uh, they're actually two different like uh, state channels. And um, through like the protocol, uh, like through the, the design protocol allows like this kind of like multi-hop payment so that um, like Alice doesn't have to open a direct channel with Bob. So it, the payment actually go through like the center network, which can be like multiple hops of state channels. Um, but if you're talking about like different, uh, like state channels from different vendors, um, we don't have a like good solution for now, but you can always like withdraw to on-chain and like deposit the money to another channel. So there is like flexibility. Yeah, so uh, just to add, uh, add on that, like, uh, you know, interacting between different state channels, the most common pattern is conditional dependency, right? So let me just uh, pull up my screen again, uh, my, my slides again. Uh, oh, yeah, I think, uh, I think we need to somehow move this stuff uh, yeah. here. And uh, where's, uh, where's your stuff? It's maybe this is too... Yeah, okay, here we go. This is always on top, I think. All right. Yeah, I think we can just yeah. close this for now and uh, see you see about the mm -hmm. question later. Okay. So you know, I talked about conditional payment, but conditional payment is just about the payment itself, right? So yeah, in fact, uh, you can build this kind of a conditional dependency between state transitions, right? So you can say that uh, in the in the uh, in the in a state channel, and making this state transition conditionally depends on something else. And that something else can also be a state channel application. And in the end, we can construct this uh, conditional dependency directly acyclic a, a graph. And uh, you know, just, just uh, so that so it, it is clear that the DAG here we are mentioning is not a consensus algorithm that you see in some work, uh, but it's really mean just mean uh, directly acyclic graph itself. Um, and uh, you know, it's basically a conditional dependency between different states and conditional transitions. Um, so that's, that's kind of an even more generalized uh, concept of uh, using uh, a standardized state channel with the interaction between different channels. Okay, so, um, yeah, is, um, yeah, just get back to the open source question. Um, like the, the SDK is open source, but uh, there's really like not much to see. It's just the APIs that uh, really matter. For, or for the client code, um, like we're definitely gonna open source it later. It's just um, we have some like uh, like polishing to, to do. Okay, now we have another question. Uh, in relation to that question, um, I think that's referring to the um, interaction between different state channels. Is there a research plan for sending payments off chain between different state channels without a central intermediary? Assuming participants both channels sign. Um, so again, like I'm not sure, are you talking about like different um, like vendors or are you talking about like um, two like seller channels that are like interconnected? Because if you're talking about two seller channels that have a route like between each other, then um, yeah, then like our protocol already uh, allows like sending uh, payments without a central intermediary. So I guess you're talking about like cross different vendors. That's my guess. Uh, can you confirm? Okay, two separate vendors. I mean, yes. Um, you know, uh, the one thing that we are doing a lot of stuff uh, on that end that is uh, organizing these kind of state channel researcher calls and uh, trying to come up with like a, a common standard for the community to move forward. And uh, you know, if you think about it, the uh, the high level API, at least for payment, is really simple. It really sends uh, you know stuff uh, from A to B, right? So uh, there's no uh, you know reason uh, that we uh, we cannot we fundament there's no fundamental reason that we cannot conform to a standard. Uh, say that okay, uh, you know maybe Seller Network can operate with uh, uh, nodes built in uh, you know. Uh, written or uh, or some other protocols. I don't know. Like uh, you know, uh, that is definitely possible, um, and we're definitely open to that. Uh, 
Um, but you know, uh, in terms of the, the generalized uh, state channel capability that is sending conditional payment and doing that, this kind of generalized state transitions, um, that standard becomes a little bit more complicated because uh, for generalized state channels, you have kind of a different design patterns. You have functional design patterns where you execute and move, uh, um, you know, progress the state of the state channel entirely based on a functional model. Where also you have like an imperative. Uh, uh, model where like you you kind of write your state channel application just like you write any other solidity code. Uh, we see pros and cons on both sides, uh, but um, you know uh, we will see how things goes on, on on each end and try to see if there's a a standard uh, can be formed uh, as more and more users uh, adopt the uh, application platforms. Cool. Yeah, any more questions, uh, feel free to type in the chat box and we're going to answer um, as much as we can. While you guys thinking on the questions, um, I wanted to remind you that today uh, our, our mentors are Michael Zhu and Mo Dong, uh, who is the co-founder of the Seller Network. Um, yes, uh, and uh, let me announce the next workshop while you're thinking. Uh, so the our next workshop uh, will be Plasma 101. Just a second, I'll just share the screen. Uh, Plasma 101 with Kelvin uh, Fichter, contributor of, contributor of Plasma. Uh, you're going to learn the basics of Plasma, including design patterns and building blocks. And also landscape of Plasma, Plasma MVP, Plasma Cache. Um, uh, if you haven't registered for the Adcon hack, uh, please register at adcon.io slash hackathon and follow us on all channels. Um, also, this workshop was facilitated and recorded uh, by CryptoChex and LinkTime. If you have any questions right now, please ask. Uh, Michael and uh, Mo will answer them. Yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, just, just let us know. Uh, I mean, we, we, can, we can go a little bit deeper into uh, the technical stack, and we can also, like, talk more, more basic stuff about the channel. Is there any request on like which direction we can go? We should go. All right. I guess I would go deep then. Uh, let's see. Well, just you know, just stop. Uh, just feel free to interrupt us and like uh, and ask questions and stuff. Uh, so another thing that I really wanted to talk about, like also on the very technical side is, uh, uh, oh, I, I was not sharing a screen. Okay, wait, wait, wait. If uh, there's a question, I was curious if you performed any stress tests uh, or checks on latency. Um, uh, yes, we have some numbers, uh, and uh, these numbers are quite good. And you know, I think this is a very valuable question to ask, first of all, because uh, not a lot of us care about the system engineering side of things. Um, and we're, we're definitely gonna, uh, you know, uh, share about our numbers uh, uh, as part of our testnet run, uh, because like uh, we are actually seeing uh, quite a lot of load with the, the most uh, most recent testnet uh, testnet launch, um, and uh, yeah, we, we do care about that a lot. But uh, uh, for a short, uh, you know, kind of a, uh, answer, um, the uh, kind of average latency we see in the states, um, you know, not being, counting the network latency itself, but just counting the software stack latency is around, is around 10 to 20 milliseconds um, and under load. So that's, I would say, like a very, very reasonable comparing to, um, you know, tens of seconds, even minutes uh, to confirmation, to finalization time uh, for on-chain transactions. Right, because if you think about it, right, like state channel is about like scaling out instead of like scaling up, right? Because uh, as Mo mentioned, there's like MDOS law for any kind of like uh, pure like layer one solution. There's like a limit. I mean, you can claim like millions of like TPS and that's like just millions and that's like on like a single test server, right? But with state channels, like if you're just talking about TPS, that's like theoretically infinite, like basically as um, 
the number of channels like scaled up, um, it's just going to scale out, right? So uh, in, and in terms of latency, it's a pure like just uh, we're trying to like always optimize the uh, messaging format and the protocol. So we like transfer um, as little bytes as possible on the network. And um, like in that, like what, basically there is like no end to that kind of like optimization, but there is no like fundamental limit um, of like how fast we can go. Right? So um, yeah, there is like always work to do. That's right. Um, well, uh, since we have like about 10 minutes, uh, so I'm just going to talk a little bit more about some interesting technical stuff related to state channel and payment networks in general. Uh, so one bit of like very interesting thing about state channel is something called routing. Uh, so routing uh, itself is very con a basic concept that is uh, from a network, whether it is data network, whether it's a payment network, how do you get, uh, or, or whether it's like transport network, how do you get from a point A to point B? Uh, using the least amount of resources from a very high level point of view, from a philosophical point of view. Every routing problem in a network is trying to solve a resource optimization problem. Right, so, um, you know, the reason that we, we really also need this kind of routing in state channel networks, and specifically, at least in the underlying payment network, whether it is a simple payment network like Lightning, or it is a generalized payment network like a center, um, they, they both need this kind of a routing algorithm to work really efficiently because you simply cannot afford the cost to open a state channel or open a uh, you know uh, payment channel with uh, every single one in the world, every single people in the world. Because for every channel you open, you have both party have to deposit something into the channel to make the channel flow really really good, right? So uh, with this kind of deposit requirement, uh, you really have to find a uh, you know, way to construct a network or channels. Uh, and we think that a most uh, a feasible way to do this is like a multi-hub network where you have a, a bunch of a hub connected to get together and that hub is connecting to a bunch of uh, end users as well. Um, you, you know, and uh, the reason that opt-in payment routing is really, really challenging because it is fundamentally different from the, our data networking, day-to-day -day internet routing. In the internet routing, the a golden principle is find the shortest path uh, along the way, right? Um, you know, if you can find the shortest path, given all sorts of constraints in terms of the geographic distribution, in terms of business partnership, you will be able to re achieve a very, very good performance. That is the shortest path. Uh, but for this kind of a payment channel, the things are very, uh, the situation is very, very different because payment channel itself is not a stateless link. What am I being stateless link is that, uh, uh, let's say for data networking, um, if uh, your uh, network speed is like 100 megabit per second, the, uh, no matter how much data you transfer, it's gonna stay 100 megabit per second. But for payment networks, uh, let's just take Lightning as the most simple example. I put in $10, you also put in $10. I send you $1 off chain. How much more dollars I can send you? $9. Right, so because the capacity of the network actually, uh, the capacity of the link actually changes as we send each other payment, right? But uh, that's that become a huge problem for shortest pass routing because network itself is constantly changing, and most of the distributed routing algorithm for data network will crash tragically under this kind of a, uh, extremely dynamic network scenario. So. We basically proposed that this new principle of payment network routing. That is, uh, you have to route in the direction that maximize the differential, uh, you know, backlog between neighbors. That is, uh, you know, uh, th that is very abstract way to say this, but you know, you can imagine that we basically kind of uh, trying to make uh, your payment flow uh, like water uh, flowing down hills. Right, so uh, we're not co only counting the number of hops in terms of uh, the shortest path, but we are also countering how imbalanced a particular channel is when we're trying to relay payment through that particular link. Right, so if the uh, link is very, very heavily imbalanced like this, we're probably not gonna choose to relay any payment anymore towards that direction if we don't have to. Um, and in fact, we'll try to route payment somehow uh, towards like this direction, to rebalance the link so that these links become like more or less balanced. So overall, we proposed something called C route that 
uh, with this kind of uh, uh, intuition, but what, what is more important is that we can actually we have actually proved that the algorithm we proposed is provably optimal. What do I mean by provably optimal is that uh, as long as there is any algorithm that is uh, capable of delivering a particular payment arrival process, let's say A is sending to B, B is sending to C, and all this stuff, as long as it is possible to deliver all these stuff with limited delay, with a bounded delay, our algorithm can do that. So that is kind of like what we call appropriately optimal uh, you know, uh, performance uh, algorithms. And uh, uh, from just a, an experiment and simulation point of view, um, the serial we proposed uh, is about 20 times higher performance comparing to uh, some of the uh, other routing algorithms used by, uh, say, Lightning Networks, for example. Um, and because Lightning Networks the routing, uh, you know, aside from the privacy structure, is uh, still very heavily rooted in the shortest path routing principle. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like a, a, a thing, and that that is also sort of interesting in terms of the state channel applications. And uh, uh, of course, on top of that, what Michael just showed is basically the COS side of things that is uh, uh, building this kind of a developer bridge uh, to the end users. So that's kind of like a, a very uh, you know high level technical overview of the of the entire tech stack. Now we have some more questions. I uh, will take some questions. Oh yeah, uh, sure. Uh, the question is that please post a link for the conditional payment uh, uh, stuff we showed earlier, like basically the, the JavaScript doc. Uh, uh, so Michael will, will definitely post that. Uh, please post the links. Okay, so. Um... Yeah, I'll post it in the chat box for now. Um, yeah, we don't have a JavaScript demo for it yet, but um, I'll get something. Um, yeah, so you guys are really taking this really fresh because right. we just released uh, the uh, JavaScript SDK in East Denver, in the past East Denver right. event. Uh, and uh, you know, we, we do have some teams used the conditional payment functionality along with like on-chain Oracle. So this is definitely something that is very interesting uh, for you guys to check it out. And uh, we're also gonna be on Discord to, uh, I think you, you posted like uh, uh, to Alina, you need to yeah, oh. post it to everyone. Yep, yeah, all right, yeah. So yeah, here we go. So yeah, basically it's send ease with condition. Yeah, I know like uh, the condition objects, uh, like we can probably explain it better. Um, but uh, yeah, I believe we, we do have like a mobile, um, Example: If uh, you're able to like read uh, like Objective C or um, let's see, so I believe we have uh, send payments. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if we have like a mobile example, but I think we do have like something in there. Um, but anyway, I'll, like I'll get some like JavaScript example working uh, in the coming days, so um, to better like show the functionality of uh, conditional payments. Yep. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And uh, another question is, will you also share the workshop doc with us? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we are happy to share. Uh, and this, these slides are already available, right. and, you know, uh, online and everything. Yeah, um, I think for the best, uh, let's see, I'm not sharing. So for now, the best documentations to get started is um, the README for um, the Setter Web SDK. Like, I guess, yeah, this read me over here. So um, if you just want to like go through uh, what I just did in the workshop, um, yeah, again, just like check out a pre-built binary, run it locally, and um, and like, like run a JavaScript demo with like a NPM run demo. So I think the hardest part is to, to actually get the key store. Um, so I know like MetaMask doesn't generate a key store, but you can go to my Ether wallet and and make sure like you find um you found the key store you found the address with some Robston um like Ethereum, and if you want any like Robston testing Ethereum, I have a bunch of them. So like yeah, I can yeah, some, some some of our friends just sent like so, a yeah. million. Yeah, two, there are two paths. Right, so, first of all, we've been running a Robston miner, so we have like a bunch of um, we mine like about eighteen one hundred eighty k, and some of our friend from Ethereum Foundation, uh, very great friend for you, just like. Sent has a million Robston testnet uh, Ethereum, so yeah, we have at least we are testnet rich. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so anyway, <laughs> just uh, if you want any like Robston testnet Ethereum, you can like come to us and we'll send you some yeah. uh, for testing. 
So yeah, um, I think this is for now like the best instructions to get started. And um, at the past East Denver event, uh, their teams literally just like took the demo and like uh, turn it into a very fun like uh, rock paper scissors kind of game with our like sense state um, functionality. Yeah, so yeah. there there were two teams build some very fun games. One build like a uh, rock paper scissors basically. Uh, the other build a uh, you know uh, what, what they call battle bomber. Um, and if, if you guys are are are, uh, are on the East Denver like the, uh, dev post or like the hackathon submission pages, you can see these apps and they're all open sourced. Um, and uh, you know. Uh, uh, another team also built uh, a functionality to uh, send uh, payment via Saturn Network using Telegram directly. Uh, so that's also pretty cool. Okay, so we got a new question. Uh, would you share the doc of the game design with us? Uh, are you talking about like the um, the hackathon game I talk about, or like is it general like how do you build a game on top of Saturn? Um, well, I guess the question is probably about more general, like uh, yeah. you know, uh, uh, build a game on top of Saturn. Well, mm -hmm. I, I, we'll we'll give you you guys something better, uh, which is like a, a full tutorial uh, to do that, uh, and we're just like uh, we're in the process of making that. Um, but yeah, uh, we're we're definitely gonna um, deliver like a step by step tutorial to use all the more complicated SDKs. Um, but for now, if you want to get your hands dirty and try some state channel stuff firsthand. Uh, you can just download the npm file and also set a client and give it a try and play around with like uh, not only just simple payment but some more fun stuff uh, like conditional payment depending on a chain link oracle or like an oracle you write yourself um, you know because that oracle can really be anything that it can be just like a smart contract um, to, to, to start with um, so it could be pretty fun cool. yeah I think we're about running out of time yeah. and um, yeah, thanks for participating in this workshop. And if you have any like further questions, you can always like find us um, like on Telegram or Discord or like any uh, Twitter, even like GitHub anywhere. So um, yeah, uh, thanks guys. Yeah, thank you guys. And uh, you know, thanks a lot, uh, Elena, for uh, inviting us into this call. And uh, um, you know, we are very, very happy to like uh, participate in AdCon. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, uh, thanks for organizing this great event. Thank you very much, Mo. Thank you, Michael. Um, so guys, uh, please register at atcon.io slash hackathon for our hackathon, and uh, we will see you for the next workshop. Thank you. And we'll be at Sydney. Yeah, we'll be at Sydney. Yeah. We'll be at, at Great. We'll see you there. Thanks. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.